Psalms 119, verse 49. And if your Bible has the, the Jewish alphabet, we're in Zion. Z-A-I-N, Zion. And the best I can do, that's what, that's what that means. Remember the word. And Psalms 119 is all about the word. Remember, memorize. Is there a Bible verse for memorization? There it is. Remember the word unto thy servant. The reader, the writer. Remember what you said, God. Remember, God, you say, never leave, the, leave me or forsake me. If I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I shall be saved. That's what our faith is in. <clears throat> upon, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. You hoping in the word? Or do you have other hopes? John chapter 1 says the word is Jesus Christ. First John says the word is Jesus Christ. Chapter 5. The Bible says in Titus 2.13, the blessed hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. The word in Jesus Christ is to be our hope. This is my comfort. It's our comfort in affliction, trouble, problems. Help. We're to have our confidence and our comfort and our hope in God. In Jesus Christ for the Christian and for the word for thy word has quickened me made me alive giving me life Jesus said on the way the truth and the light he's the word he's the light the proud have had me greatly in derision that scorn laughing stock pride proud it's a sin it's a sin and the proud and the pride look at the Christian, the man of God, and they laugh at him. God says, one day I'll get the last laugh, Proverbs chapter 1. And you sure don't want God to be laughing at you. Yet have I not declined from thy law. And that's the word, that's Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Hey, they've made fun of me, but I ain't stopping. Hey, you know what? I go to work and I'm sitting in the cafeteria and I'll have my sandwich and my coworkers over there laughing at me because I got a Bible. My boss laughs at me because he sees me bow my head before I eat, eat my sandwich. They hate it, but my employer has to allow me to have the scripture in my cubicle. They hate it. They, they laugh at me. Keep it going. Keep doing. Keep serving. Keep passing out gospel track. I remember. And when the time of Jeremiah, Judah, they forgotten God. The Lord's Supper is remind us the sufferings of Christ and Christ is coming back. I remember thy judgments of old. And again, for the Jewish person, that looks back at Exodus. That looks back at the, the, the wilderness journeys. That looks back at the book of Judges. That looks back at Joshua. That looks back. You know, there was a little boy that loved the Lord, served the Lord, and he went up to the giant army, and God made one little rock, pulling right in the forehead. What was that judgment? That was judgment upon Goliath. Knocked his head right to sleep. And yet, history's being changed. History's being erased. I hope the Jewish people are not doing I don't know. I know we have modern versions of our Bible. There's one Bible, the King James Bible, uh, the Geneva Bible. I don't know if the Jewish people have different versions of I hope they don't. I just 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 all this time they thought about it. I don't know if they had their own versions. I hope they don't change. Because everything before Psalms 119, the Jewish history, the Jewish victories, and the Jewish failures. A mark of the Jewish God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, man fails, man's a sinner, but God is faithful. And you read that through Judges. They do, they do terrible. God sends in the enemy. They repent. God sends in a savior. That's, that picture is Jesus Christ. 
that saviors that come in. You know, one guy has an out ox goal. One guy has, has candles and, and broken pottery. And yet, those miracles are like the miracle of God's blood on the cross. And have comforted myself. What? We count our many blessings. Why? That reminds us of the blessings that God has done for us. God has given us. And then when we come to a pleasant trouble in our life, they, you know what? It, it may not be like last time, but God got me through it. It may be a little thicker. It may be a little deeper, but my God's able. I might not like it. I may lose a little faith. I may lose hope. But I can't lose God. And when the writer of Psalm 119, when he writes his part, he says, you know what? Though Israel and Judah has forsaken God, God has never forsaken Israel and Judah. You know what? That comforts me. That's what he says. Horror has taken hold upon me because of the wicked that have forsaken thy law. Now, Hollywood makes money on horror movies. You know, the guy is going to kill everybody at the camp and this monster and all that. And, and the writer of the song says, you know what his horror is? When the wicked forsake the law, that means they're going to hell. And for the writer of the song, that is his horror. If that man don't get right with law and do according to the Old Testament of the law of the Jewish people, if he doesn't, he, that man is going to die and go in hell. To him, that is a horror. What about the Christians today when the Bible tells us to go in all the world and preach to God? I can't do it. I got all the important things. There's no horror of family and friends and people going to hell. That's selfish. And you know what? I have the right to judge your works. If, if you have no interest in anybody but yourself going to hell and trying to rescue, if you don't have any interest, I, I, I'll call the question your salvation. Maybe you should have said a prayer. Maybe somebody just said, you know, just say this prayer. And okay. You know. This guy said it is a horror. You know what a horror show should be for the Christian? There are people out there in the world that are going to die. They're going to die today. They're going to die tonight. And they're going to go to hell. And I need to go out there and tell them as many as I can about Jesus. Now, I can't save them. But I can try to prevent them. And that's exactly what we're going to try to do, Lord willing, tomorrow when we go to the farmer's market. They laugh. They put us in derision. They scorn us. They... But I'm going to try to tell them about the horrors of hell. We had a Christian one time, they come out to it, and I was preaching about hell because I always preach about hell. And, oh, we can't go there no more. Why? What's wrong? You didn't like how people treat it? No, you kept preaching about hell. Well, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yeah. Saved from what? So with them not liking the preaching of hell, they've gone into another ministry with, with the kiddies. And I got, you know, okay, what's that ministry? If they hated me preaching about hell, then there's no hell in that children's ministry that they love and adore. Are they really getting saved? Because you got to get saved. From, listen, the guy that witnessed to me April 27, 1987, that man told me I was going to hell. If there's one thing I remember about April 27, though I forget that. The date, but though I, that day, that afternoon, I know one thing. I did not want to go to hell. I got saved for one sole purpose. I didn't want to go to hell. I was told that Jesus died and he was buried and he rose again for me. I got saved out of a place of horror. And if you're not going to bring up hell, you're not going to bring repentance, there's no salvation. There's no horror. Where is this hellless place that you need to be saved from? I don't know. But the writer of the song says it's a horror that the wicked who forsake the law, according to the law and the writings of the psalmist at this point of time, 
This historical fact is, if you did not keep the law, there is no death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus had not even born yet. If you did not keep the law, you did not keep the testimony, you did not do what Moses wrote at the mount of God, you died and went to hell. Jesus said there was, a, there was Lazarus and a rich man. And the rich man died and was buried and woke up in hell. That man was under the law. Lazarus was carried away to Abraham's bosom. What did Lazarus do? He did the law. What didn't the, the rich man do? He didn't keep the law. And the rich man was rich. So even in the Old Testament, prosperity did not mean you were right with God. And poor and beggarly did not mean you were not right with God. The statues, again, that's part of the law. That's a law statement. Sometimes they judge on his bench will say, all right, the statue of this law states you're guilty or you're innocent. It's a law-defined term, statue. Have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. That's a long journey. He has put the statutes of the law to song. How's that for a hymn? Now? How's that for an old time hymn sing? There is parts of the law of Moses that this psalmist wrote, and he says, "I sing the, I sing it." I don't know what part he would sing. It is not. I mean, thou shalt not, thou shalt not kill, honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. I, I don't know. I shall have no other gods before thee. I, I, that's what he was doing. You know, they say the law, and we, like I said the other day, we make the law look bad to this guy. He's like, the law is keeping me alive. The law is keeping me right with God. I know why I have to bring that animal to the, to the tabernacle. Because this law says, hey, I'm guilty. It made them guilty in the Old Testament as it would make us guilty in the New Testament. I have remembered. And so he remembered in verse 52. Again, in Jeremiah, that's what Judah, that's Judah's problem. They have forgotten. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night. He gets up in the middle of the night, or maybe he works in the night. Maybe, you know, he's guard doing something, whatever. But in the middle of the night, he's God. Maybe he gets up to go to the bathroom. Lord God, I want to thank you. Lord God, by the by the mercies of Jehovah, the great I am, I can get up. I've had a good sleep, but I, I, was, I was dreaming good. And by the I am, thank you I can get up. Thank you I didn't have an accident in bed or wh whatever it was. Thank you I'm able to do a job and have kept thy law. Now, he couldn't keep the whole law. We're all guilty. One point offended, James says. But this is the this is the definition you find in the word Bible in the Bible. Perfect. Did he keep the law 100 percent Absolutely correctly not. But to the best of his ability, he says, Lord, I, I've done it. Job was able to do it. That rich man that came to Jesus, Jesus said, Thou shalt not uh, commit, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt love thy mother and father. And the and young man says, I have done all that, Lord. And Jesus did not rebuke him. He said, okay, let's deal with coveting. That guy kept nine of those commandments and blew number 10. He was still guilty, but nine out of 10 is good. I'm sorry, I have been guilty of all 10 and plus some. This I had. Uh, well, this, I don't know what he had. He says, I have kept thy law. This I had. The law, because I have kept thy precepts. That's part of the, the law. All right, next one is hit or hef. Hit or hef. Next letter of the Jewish alphabet. Thou art my portion. You know, um, you think about you got Thanksgiving and you got yourself a pumpkin pie and 
they they cut that pumpkin pie in pieces and you get a part of that pumpkin pie uh, it's and the writer of song saying lord listen i gotta go to work today i got my family maybe i gotta love a wife maybe children but you are also part of my day as much as my family as much as my job lord you have a part in my life there's too many Christians out there. The Lord don't have a portion. The Lord don't have a part. Oh, Sunday. 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half. That's a portion. Uh, how many hours are in a week? Oh, Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. There's memorization again. I keep, I remember, that's also, I'm not only going to keep your word. The Bible says, be doer of the word. I'm going to do what the word says. I am not going to look upon a maid to lust after her. I am going to be faithful to my mother. I am going to, to honor my parents. I am going to bring a goat or a lamb. I am going to bring a tent. <coughs> <coughs> What your law says, what your word says, I'm going to remember the Lord. I'm not going to forsake the Lord. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. God, I, I want you to give me a favor. And I've sought it with my whole heart. Listen, I'm, I'm right now, I, I'm searching for a wife. I want the Lord to give me a wife. And the Bible says in the Proverbs, it says a man that finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. Like, Lord, I want that favor. And there are favorable things in the Bible. And he's saying, Lord, this is what he's saying. I'm praying to you. I've got supplications to you. And if you were to answer my prayers, it is a favor. Thank you. You don't have to. It is the good will of God that he answers our prayers, what he's saying. And my whole heart, I'm going to give you all. I'm not going to say, well, God, maybe God won't do it. Well, I'll tell you what, God can give me part. And the government can give me another part. And my uncle, who, who's got a big bit, he can give me another part. And I'll go borrowing, begging money from the bank for the other part. No. I want a favor. I want it all from God. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. Can I ask for God for mercy? The psalmist is. And then find the scripture where it says God giveth mercy. Find in the word of God where God says right here, God, chapter and verse, mercy. That takes someone who has remembered the word. That takes someone who has searched the word. And that takes someone who's kept the word. Right here, Lord, it says right here, mercy. I send mercy unto that. Okay, Lord, I, I, that's, that's what you, and that applies to me. I, I properly divided the word of God. That goes to me. I want that mercy, Lord. How can God turn them down? God, your word said, hey, listen, you know, if I, but mercy. There's nothing wrong taking the word of God rightfully dividing. Make sure you rightfully don't go in there in the Bible and just grab and nitpick it. I can do all things through Christ with strength. Really? Yeah. Let's go find the tallest building in the world and let's see you jump. What do you mean? I can do all things through Christ. I can jump off a building. I can fly. Several years back, I worked in the grocery store and I had to listen to that stupid me worldly me and one of the stupid worldly music was i could fly i could fly i'm like go jump off a building and show me you can do it it almost sounded like a christian song i could do all things through christ with strength i mean yeah take that verse completely out of context but he's not this is someone who's remembered the word this is somebody who's kept the word this is somebody who is who is by the word has been made alive he's taken the word he's put it to music I thought on my ways. Ooh, I've been thinking about what I'm doing. And turn my feet unto thy testimony. He's repenting. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. 
you know what, where I'm going, this is not what the Bible, this is not where Moses told us. I'm walking the wrong direction. I turn my feet. That's repentance. And I've gone to the testimony of what God has done. You know, Moses sinned. And Moses came to the Lord. And look what God did to him. Jacob sinned. Jacob turned and got right. Look what God did to him. Book of Judges. They constantly did wrong. They got right. And look what that, that's what he's saying. God, they sinned against you. They got right. They repented. I'm doing the same thing, Lord. I mean, I can just imagine saying, Lord, look how many times Samson did it. But hey, we have all sinned. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandment. Went right into it. I didn't delay. If I made a vow, I, I performed that vow as quick as I could do that vow. If it says, thou, thou shalt not commit adultery, that moment the thought came into my head, nope, that's it, get it out. My mom and dad needed help, I need to honor, I went over there and helped them. The bands of the wicked, groups of people, have robbed me. Uh oh. When I'm a Christian, nothing's supposed to happen to me. The bands, of the, the bands of the wicked had robbed me, so I pulled out my gun and shot them all. That's the new Baptist edition for 2020. I pulled out my gun, bang, 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 bang. And that's not what it says. The bands of the wicked had robbed me, but I have, from, I have not forgotten thy law. They couldn't steal the word of God from them. Hey, they took something from me, but they can't take the word of God. It's in my heart. It's in my heart. They may be, you know, if there's coming a time, because the Bible says there's coming a time that there'll be a famine of the word of God. There'll be no Bible. Woe be to the Christian if it happens before the, before the rapture and you haven't been reading, you haven't been studying your word. What are you going to do once the Bibles are forbidden? And some of you just won't care at all. You you probably like it. You better remember the word. You better keep the word. You better sort the word. They may take the word. I hear more people. They, they can't take my gun. What about the Bible? I go, yep. They're all upset right now because NASCAR, you know, you can't say the Pledge of Allegiance and all that. Well, why aren't you upset that you can't stand on the, on the stands of NASCAR and in between the races get up and preach Jesus Christ without them calling the cops and security? Why aren't you upset about that? Why is it that we got the Daytona 500 track over here? Why is it one weekend we went over there to pass out gospel tracks and the security of the, of the Daytona 500 came and asked us to leave? Ask my family. Oh, by the way, you know who turned us in? Other Christians. Other Christians went to the security department and turned us in. Because probably our literature was free and you had to buy theirs. Yeah. Yeah. At midnight, that's night. I will rise and give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. And it doesn't say why he's going to get up. He says at midnight, I'm going to get up and give thanks to God. Is it because he has to get up at midnight? Is it because he wants to get up for the Lord at midnight? Is that a set routine? He, he has come. I'm going to get up in the middle of the night and I'm going to thank the Lord. How are you doing under grace, Christian? This is a man that had to do a sacrifice every year, come three times a year to Jerusalem. We have one sacrifice for all. We're saved by grace. We know where we're going to go when we die, not this guy. And he says, you know what? I'm going to get up in the middle of the night and I'm going to thank God. 
You can't even thank God on the on the, on the Thursday and Thanksgiving without gotta go to Black Friday. He says that judgments are righteous. Oh no, God had a tornado. That's righteous. You deserved it. Oh no, God had coronavirus. You deserved it. You sinned against God. What did Paul say in the church age? Rejoice evermore. It's cancer. We can't do anything about it. Thank the Lord. What? How you doing, Christian? I am a companion of them that fear thee. He's in the right company. He's not going to hang around with the worldly people. He's not going to hang out with the half-beat Christians. He'll sit at the lunchroom at work by himself. If they're going to talk about God, they're going to curse God, and they're going to lift up and praise sin. I'll sit over here at this table by myself. Christians don't do that. And of them that keep thy precepts, they obey the word, they fear God, you're my friend. Let's have a meal together. Keep thy precepts and, and, and fear thee. That's not in the programs of the church today. Carnality. I'm surprised that, that this church age it's not called the Thess uh, no, take that back. This church age is not called the Corinthian church age. Uh, uh, that would have been perfect. Instead of Laodicean, it, it should have been the Corinth. The last church age, the Corinth. It fit perfectly. But probably not because Second Corinthians, they actually got right. Our church don't get right. I said, a proper name for our church age would be the Corinthians, but then an improper name for the church age, the Corinthians, because the second Corinthians, they got right with the Lord. Our church age is not going to get right. It's only going to get worse and worse and worse. The earth, O oh Lord, is full of, full of thy mercy. God's mercy is all around. Verse 58, he says, be merciful. And he's asking God for mercy. And he tells us, verse 60, mercy is, is abundant. It's all through the earth. Everywhere you can find a story about it could have been worse. That's God's mercy. There's mercy to us that we don't even know that what God prevented us as we go through our day. What could have happened? That's God's mercy. Teach me thy statue. Again, he's looking for, hey, I want to know what the word of God says. I want to know what God wants. I want to know more. And then you, you get an hour service at the church and people were yawning and falling asleep. They got their Bible clothes and they're wondering what they're going to do after church service and what they're going to order at the restaurant. That's a shame. They won't go home and read their Bible. That's a shame. They won't go and study their Bible. That's a shame. Some people go to church and they don't even have a Bible. That's a shame. And the Old Testament, how strict they were. This guy says, I want to know all I can know. How you doing, Christian? How we doing? I think some of these Old Testament saints are going to put us Christians to shame. I think they're going to put us to shame. 